All right, here I have another part ready to be glassed into the hull of the boat. So this is the um, bulkhead, which will go um, parallel to the center line of the boat and uh, it will divide uh, uh, the cockpit locker from, um, from the area under the cockpit uh, sole where the tank is. I made opening for the hatches and um, the hatches themselves are here. I'm using the same uh, pieces which I cut out and um, sorry I didn't film the process. What I did to cut these pieces out, I took um, two and a half mil uh, drill bit and um, drilled uh, a few holes besides each other so that I could insert the, the hacksaw blade into the opening, into the slot. And then using a straight edge to guide the hacksaw, I managed to make uh, the cuts that are quite okay. And, and the hatches are, they can be, they can be used in these openings. Oh, shit. It fits uh, very nice, considering it's a bulkhead that's not visible, uh, it's only a storage area. It's good that the Okume plywood is so lightweight. So this is the area under the cockpit sole, which this bulkhead is going to separate. I cut away a piece of timber that was supporting the uh, cockpit sole and uh, this uh, I left these pieces in place to help me align the bulkhead uh, and afterwards I will remove them completely. Okay, let's try if it goes in here. in its place. Another shot from the inside of the boat. biggest one is gonna give me a good access to the stern gland. Hey, 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 removed some stuff out of the warehouse so it's nice and empty now and I have so much space to work and um, I made this long table to cut my glass. And, um, and here I have pre-cut and labeled um, different length and uh, different um, width of uh, cloth, combi cloth with a fiberglass mat. Much easier to use than um, separate cloth and separate mat. And I've also labeled the, um, the plywood edges uh, with numbers so I know that the top side is number one, then uh, next to it is number two, and then there's number three. And when I put this bulkhead in the place, I have uh, the same numbers here, number one, and then I have number one B, like uh, the B side of uh, long play. <laughs> First width, then the second width, and third width. So there will be three layers of uh, fiberglass for the tabbing. Much easier to work this way than uh, 
cut a piece, then glue it in place, then cut next piece, because then your hands are uh, dirty with uh, resin and, uh, and you mess up with the glass and it sticks on your hands. But if you have everything pre-cut, then just wet the piece you need. Put it in place, wet the next piece, put it in place. I'm talking from my experience now. But there are many good tutorials of fiberglassing, so by far I'm no expert. Okay, so both of these bulkheads are in place now, separating the tank compartment from, um, from the rest of the boat. These two pieces on the sides are new, and then um, these pieces are old. So I glass them together. Oh, here is a little hole to let the water drain so that it will not get trapped. And these plywood pieces that were in place before they received just a new tabbing. Now working with epoxy, polyester is much cheaper but um, epoxy has much uh, better adhesive properties and and uh, for me it works better. Oh and one more thing, uh, I have to cut one more hedge into this panel uh, because my engine choice is a uh, Solei, uh, Mitsubishi based marinized engine and this engine needs access from its uh, side to service it so I will make a nice big hatch. To build the interior of the boat it helps uh, when the boat is level and uh, this is what I'm doing right now trying to level it. I'm using um, as you see a laser. The problem is that uh, the bow of the boat is sloped and uh, you can move the level one way or another way and turn it and it will still match with the bow line. So I I hung this uh, plumb line from the bow and, um, and this gave me another reference point and um, now you can see, it's hard to see on the camera I suppose, the line is red and the um, laser line is red but this um, laser uh, line starts from the top of the bow and then uh, continues along the plumb line and this um, plumb line when I move it aside then you can see the laser line continues straight And finally, here it is, the tank is in its place. Lashed to the ratchet straps with stainless steel ratchets. Plastic corner protections on the sides, you can see those aluminum L-shaped profiles which will hold the shelf uh, for the batteries. Bolt it through and um, 
You can see on the other side there is a backing plate. Okay, now that the tank is in place, I have finished most of the work in this compartment. And while waiting for the new engine to be installed, I'm scratching my head and um, thinking how to proceed with a quarter berth. So here I am trying to use my laser tool and I found out uh, that um, this upper edge is not level. You can see the laser is just touching the upper edge in this corner and right there there is quite a big distance between the laser line and and the edge of the bulkhead about five six centimeters and uh, yes I checked the boot is level I checked on the floors I checked on the deck What I'm doing, I'm creating a scarf joint for the plywood panel. The half bulkhead, which was not um, level, which uh, needs to be extended from the top. Uh, one side a little bit wider and the other side a little bit less. And I'm using just a belt sander to do this. Uh, first time ever I'm trying to do such a thing and let me show you not too bad for the first time job uh, without the proper tool so you can see here is the pencil line I still have to cut a little more on this side and of course I have to make a matching scarf on uh, the bulkhead inside the boat. So this is the bulkhead I was talking about. This one here, just in front of the quarter berth. And now I have to scarf this side. I just made an awful mistake. I started scarfing the bulkhead from the wrong side. I already made a small cut on this edge. And then I suddenly realized that the piece I've already made is going this way. So I have to scarf the other, the other side of the bulkhead. It's the next day since I made um, my first uh, ever scarf joint to plywood panels and uh, let's see how it turned out. The moment of truth is right now. <laughs> yeah, the epoxy has cured. I'll remove the, these buttons that that were holding the top piece and let's see. And, and 
and the epoxy didn't stick to these at all. So they fulfill their task perfectly. So that's how it looks with the tape and buttons removed. It needs some sanding to remove the excess resin and then we will see the final outcome. Another night has passed. The epoxy has cured nice. Uh, I used thickened epoxy to, to fill this piece and um, it needs some more fairing but um, uh, most of it it's gonna be covered with um, trim uh, like mahogany or teak or iroko I don't know what I have available this one here is uh, just to prevent excess resin to drip out of the corner. So I use this piece of wood covered in uh, packing tape. Let's see the other side. On the other side, I renewed the tabbing to the hull. So this bulkhead was made of two separate pieces of plywood joined edge to edge, but joint. So I glassed it over and, and on the top I made this extension to make the bulkhead level. And um, this one is a scarfed joint with a ratio of um, two to one. And uh, for extra security, I also glassed it over. So should be strong enough. And uh, now I clamped uh, the straight edge onto the bulkhead to use it as a guide for uh, a hand router to trim off the few mils of, uh, of the top of the bulkhead. Of course I cannot reach the very end uh, with the router so this has to be removed with other tools. Somehow I'm in the filming mood today, so it uh, doesn't happen so often last times. There are different ways to skin a cat. Would you ever want to skin a cat? I'm talking about making uh, templates. So here I have um, a template in place. I cut out the rough shape, the triangle of the cheap material I had lying around. And then to, to find out the curvature of the hull, I just used this 90 degree angle and I draw lines and, and uh, marked how many millimeters I have to add from this place. And of course it's worth double checking with the laser if um, everything is level and if everything is at the same level. So my reference point is the bulkhead that is already in place and the laser shows me that, that it's in, uh, in line. I already checked it. And um, the new bulkhead, the template, is also 
level but it's um, a little bit um, too low I have to extend uh, five mils on the top edge so. and now I'm just uh, scribing these marks onto the actual plywood it's always so exciting uh, when you have just cut out the new piece and and gonna try if it's if it's going to fit let's see well it kind of does fit but it's standing a bit proud and this is because um, there is a small gap underneath and uh, I have to bevel the the other edge a bit because the hull is shaped, it's going upwards. The quarter berth has received this piece to support the outer side of uh, the, the panels. What a nice view, a brand new shiny blue Soleil engine, Soleil Mini 29. It's a Mitsubishi three-cylinder block, marinized by Spanish company Soleil, with a TMC 40 gearbox and ready for installation. The engine is ready, but the boat is not. But there is a new shaft fitted, new shaft bearing. And this is the instrument panel for the engine. And uh, there is a slight problem with this. The Volvo Penta instrument panel was much smaller and the new one doesn't fit in the opening. This wouldn't be a problem because opening can be enlarged, but there is a gear selector lever on the, the instrument panel, and this is too close. The two holes are too close to each other and I cannot uh, put this panel uh, this way. And the other problem is that um, this panel has an ignition key and this one will interfere with the gear lever. But every situation has a solution, hopefully. This is a cardboard mock-up, a model of the instrument panel recess. So this is the hole for bilge pump. This is uh, for the instrument panel and uh, here is already glassed in the hole for um, gear selector lever. So my solution is um, to cut a new hole three centimeters, maybe four, below the original hole. Then I can enlarge in the hole for um, instrument panel and I will make a glass fiber insert recess behind this cockpit wall so that the instrument panel will sit um, not so exposed. So this is the view from the inside of the cockpit locker. The bilge pump hole, instrument panel hole and where the gear selector used to be. I need only three walls, bottom, side and back wall. So it's a pretty simple fiberglass construction. I made a um, plywood mold, a male mold. I've never did before 
any glass work over the mold or inside the mold so it's my first try the fairing needs to be sanded so that everything is smooth then I will have two walls and the back wall after a little bit of sanding I'm quite happy with the result of this patching up the hole of the gear lever considering it's my first ever attempt to patch such a large hole there are many tutorials on YouTube how to make this kind of repair and I'm no expert so I'm not going to teach you anything but I tell you a few words how I did it first of all I beveled the edges of the existing hole about three centimeters and then I put a backing plate in place which I supported from the side of the hull from there with a piece of um, wood and then I cut exact pieces of um, cloth first two pieces were exact match inside the hole and then three layers each about a little bit bigger than the previous one and they glassed them in place and then I used another backing plate supported it from this side took off the other backing plate the first one and glassed over uh, the other side with a few layers and inside the cockpit locker I put uh, epoxy fairing on this side and sanded it smooth so this will be one of the walls exposed to outside here it is my first ever attempt to create a fiberglass part from the mold I used wax on top of this plywood mold and and then uh, four layers of uh, very lightweight fiberglass cloth the fifth layer is matte and cloth combo 24 hours have passed and let's see if uh, part will pull off from the mold i coated the plywood with a lot of wax and PVA after that, but it still seems to hold quite strong. And it came off. Oh. I think I can be pretty happy with the result. After some fairing and sanding, the instrument panel recess is ready to be glassed into its place. I've enlarged the hole where it's going to fit into and I also drilled these little holes to take these 12 volt uh, sockets okay so I got this um, instrument panel recess uh, glued into place with thickened epoxy once it's cured I will uh, glass it with uh, some cloth from the inside and inside it's um, supported with these buttons and you can see the two holes for I just realized I haven't done much uh, before and after shots if any 
so now it's perfect time for one so let's climb inside the boat for this here we go this is the before shot of the engine bay with the engine beds raised for the solar and this is the after shot what i mean by this after deinstalling the old engine and before installing the new engine so this is my before and after shots just testing how things fit together i put the panel in temporarily and here is the sockets so everything is tucked away nicely that there is no chance you will step onto the key or or smash the gauges i'm so glad uh, at least some things are taking shape on the boat and i'm talking about the um, quarter berth so here it is you can remove this uh, small lid or you can uh, remove the whole top plate and um, there you can see the template is being made for the aft piece and i've also finished painting the cockpit locker you can see this paint was horrible another view from the top the paint itself is uh, not horrible i hope it's durable it's two component polyurethane paint i hope it will last but the smell was terrible while painting and you can see as a coincidence the template is exactly the same length as the plywood panel width it would be nice to say i planned it so that i measured everything carefully but no it just happened so Getting this curve right is just a matter of eyeballing it and and feeling it. Pretty happy with the result. To be honest, it's almost perfect. Just caught myself on a thought: Who even cares about this alignment? This this stuff. This will be covered with uh, mattresses. No one will even see it. Only I know if it's good or not. I don't know. For some reason, I'm doing this. But here I am using this straight edge to mark the hole for the hatch to align them perfectly. So that's just me. Here you can see the bottom plates of the quarter berth drying 
they have been painted with epoxy as well as this area but the main reason I'm uh, filming today is my tank yesterday I watched a video on YouTube of a boat builder who who ordered a plastic tank from um, from the manufacturer which I don't know and he pressure tested his tank and it was leaking from the wells and I thought this is my last chance before uh, the engine goes in the tank is still readily accessible and um, and I thought yeah I have to test it here is my setup I just connected similar size outlets with a suitable piece of hose so one hose connects this one and this one there a little bit larger hose connects the other two and then there is the biggest one the inlet hose this is temporary of course I just bought it for testing reasons I have this pressure pressure gauge which reads from uh, 0 to 1 bar and uh, just a car tire valve and I'm gonna try to put some pressure in now supposed about 0 0.2 maximum 0 0.3 bars as you can see it's uh, 0 0.2 bars now the tank is uh, bulging uh, under the pressure a bit nothing too serious we will leave it like this and uh, tomorrow morning I'm gonna come back and check the gauge if the pressure has dropped or not before that I'm gonna spray some uh, water on top of the ball valve because this is the most suspicious place for me at the moment yeah there is obvious leak there that's what I suspected shit this nice wooden bungees so this must work this must work shit that's frustrating so this is the final try today to pressure the tank i just sacrificed my good rubber glove cut off its thumb and put it you know like the rubber things are put over things and let's try it this time it works okay we'll call it a day today and um, we'll come back tomorrow to check the pressure if it holds or not if not then a spray gun with some soapy water and we'll start looking for the leaks 12 hours later the pressure has dropped just a little bit we'll see in 24 hours so it's um, next day evening and we are 20 hours since pressurizing the tank and let's see it's more or less the same than in the morning i'll call it success hello hello sailing small dreaming big is back again another winter is approaching i'm heating the boat with the electric heater to do any work here the plywood panels which were coated in epoxy are curing here inside the boat And yesterday I made this addition, I glued and glassed in these two wooden buttons. They are attached to the 
cockpit well the purpose is um, that I can mount some electronic devices like MPPT controllers for solar, a DC DC converter, etc. etc. So I have to give this area some light sanding and we are ready to paint it. Moving slowly forward with baby steps. Here you can see the quarter berth. The bottom has been painted with a dumbbellin and um, the bulkhead in the back and, um, and this uh, plywood box they have been painted with um, Hempel undercoat primer and um, multi-coat which is a semi-gloss uh, top coat so the paint dried nicely and all the aluminium um, profiles are installed. There is something very strange here. It doesn't fit anymore. Of course I dry fitted everything. So when this edge is aligned nicely, there is the error. Nothing too bad, I just have to make a small cut and repaint one edge. The other one went in place just as it was meant to be. So a minute with a jigsaw and sandpaper and everything fits together as it should of course there is a problem now because this edge which I got away is exposed so I want all my plywood edges to be epoxy treated and uh, this is what I have to do now repaint it with epoxy so that it will soak nicely into the plywood and and then we are good to brush a little paint on there and and we can call this done mm -hmm. 